Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, this is dedicated, this video, to one special little spasmoid who just tried to trigger me on the back of a bus. You have failed, right? You have failed. Go to catch the bus home, right? The bus is packed. And worse than that, there's someone with music blaring out of their phones sitting at the back of the bus. There's three of them, about 15 years old, little kids, little boys, little spasmoids, right? Unfortunately, due to the bus being packed, I've had to sit just in front of them on that raised bloody wheel arch seat. I hate that one. There's not sufficient leg room for a man of my size, but needs must. So I'm sitting there and trying to ignore their music. I can hear them giggling behind me, right? And suddenly the music stops and then is replaced with Afghan Dan, Tic Tac business. But it's going on. I'm just ignoring it. I'm just ignoring it. And then one of them starts piping up, right, shouting at me. Oh, you tic-tac bloke, tic-tac man. Do you like this song? It's a banger. Banger, you little cretin. It's a banger, isn't it? Oh, did you get back in your box? Are you back in your box? He's constantly shouting at me. So I turn around. I catch my first look at him. I mean, that was a shock to start with. He looks like a deformed little pea. Stupid candy floss, fluffy hair on his head like he's little T, right? Massive overbite, goofy little gimp trying to abuse me. He squealed like a banshee, little banshee bitch, right? Don't smile at me, he shouts. Don't smile at me, you nonce, you effing little nonce. Swearing, right? Cross is a massive line. Tic Tac is one thing. Accusing me of being a nonce in public is quite another. We'll go ahead, Alex. We'll go ahead. Oh, you want to sleep with people's mums, don't you, you dirty little nonce? Disgusting, right? Some home truths for you, you little idiot. Number one, you are a knobhead. Number two, a nonce is someone who wants to have sex with children. I'm talking about meeting single mums. It's literally the exact opposite. I want older women who've been left lonely, who don't get the chance to meet people. I don't get the chance to meet people. Looking for companionship, but nothing to do with kids. Gutter, gutter mind. All right, number three, and final home truths for you. A liberal dousing of Lynx Africa does not constitute a shower. I can smell you from four feet away. You stank. You stank of a mixture of B.O. and budget crisps. Trying to hide it under the unlovely aroma of Lynx Africa. Get yourself in a shower, dirty birdie. And this continued the whole way home. As I was getting off the bus, he's still shouting at me, right? Even giving me his name repeatedly. Put me in a video. Put me in a video. My name is... Go on, shame me. Shame me. Right, here's your shaming. There's absolutely no way that you can trigger me. There's no way I'm going to give you a shout out and mention your name in your, your name in my video. Right? There's no way I'm going to give you that exposure. And clearly, it would be the happiest day of your life to go home and see me calling your name out. Right? So you can show all your pathetic little friends. Well, when you go home and you see this video, you can cry. Because I've not shouted you out. I've shamed you. I've taken you back to school. You've been taught a lesson. You can sit there and you can sob. Right? While you're probably, probably trying to use your own tears as lubricant while you masturbate, you dirty little birdie. Do it quietly, mind. Your parents are only downstairs. Idiot, right? Christ, look at the state of me. Right, you're probably wondering why I am dressed like an overweight method transvestite hooker with a bloody pink tiara on my massive tic-tacular head. I lost a bet last night um, to Tom Stockdale, my YouTube friend. He smashed me at FIFA and as a forfeit, I now have to dress like a woman for this video and put a tiara on my head. So this is what I'm doing. This is why I look so bloody ridiculous. I left our mate Gav's house where we watched the football. I got a bloody flat tyre in the C3, right? I had to pull over and start changing it. All right, as I'm doing it, this little 12-year-old kid waddled over. His mum was wafting over the bloody pavement with his sister. Right? He waddled over and he started giving me a bloody jiff. 12 years old. Unbelievable. It wasn't even Tic Tac, although I bet you recognised me. I bet that's what bloody caused him to come over. Anyway, he went, oi, brov, brov, I'm bloody 35 years old. You're about 12. I'm at least 20 years older and better than you. Do you know what I mean? Give me the respect that I deserve. He said, oi, brov, why are your jeans so tight? I said, they're not tight. They're bloody skinny jeans. They're meant to be tight. Do you know what I mean? I wear them because I'm six foot four. You showcase your assets. I've got long legs. Anyway, I said, you know, they're skinny jeans. They're meant to be this tight. He said, not that tight. Why are you wearing women's ones? They're women's ones. What are you women's ones? Six foot five. What woman do you think would fit in a pair of jeans that I fit in? It's plainly ridiculous. Idiot. Doesn't even understand fashion. Anyway, his mum came and rescued me eventually. She threatened him. She told him to come or he was going to lose his effing McDonald's, in her words. Idiot. Really, really disrespectful. My sister has been waging a sick psychological warfare on me and she's got no idea what she started. Right? Yesterday, I went on the bus, right? I got my headphones out and put them in my ear and it sounded like I was listening to the music so everybody shout 
or something. Looked at my headphones, right? They weren't my Stinhouses. They've been swapped for this cheap pair of Primark headphones that my niece gave me for Christmas. They're like a pound. They're terrible, right? I was thinking, how the hell has this happened? I'm really careful about my headphones. You're know, questioning myself, right? And then today, before I left the house, I checked. Checked them, my Stinhouses, right? And the little rubber bits were gone off the headphones, right? Just the little plastic bits left. You can't even listen to it. Looked all around the house, everywhere. Every one of my little rubber bits are gone. You get like six little extra ones, they're gone. My sister has stolen them. Right? I've been left alone with my own thoughts yesterday, and it was hell. No one should be left alone constantly with what goes on in here. I don't want to listen to it all the time. Right? I had to use the most budgety, rubbish pair of headphones I could find left in the house. I'm walking around looking like this. Could I be any more twatty? Look at me, the tic tac head with a pair of cheap blue headphones on. And worse than that, right, they don't even work properly. Didn't even realise I'm walking through the middle of the town. There's also the connection rubbish and it's playing it loud off my phone as well. Oh, it's so embarrassing. I was listening to M people, like Search for the Hero Inside Yourself, and everyone knew it. It's a gimpy song. But I was just, I just, it didn't matter why I was listening to it. The, the ratings are my own. I was embarrassed because of my sister. Ah, oh, the way at home I had to just sit there on the bus with no headphones just listening to conversation. I hate it ever since people start recognising me. I just want to tune them all out. I just sit there. Uh, and the worst thing is all the students are back now as well. All the uni lads. The posh boy sitting just back on the bus about. Just sitting behind me on the bus like talking to his mate. He's insane I think it's that Tic Tac head bloke. And he goes, he goes, no I don't think it is. I think it's just a bloke with a strange head. Just dismissed like that. I'm having to listen to this because of my sister. And the epiphany moment, I did. I did. I've let myself drop. I've let my standards fall. I'm no longer fighting for what I believe in. Well, my sister has opened Pandora's bloody box. She doesn't know what she started. I will get revenge and it will be dark and twisted. Honestly, if I could find a way to infuse meat with the HIV virus and feed it to my vegan sister, that's the kind of level I'm talking about now. I had the worst journey in the world yesterday coming down to the Isle of Wight, right? It started before I even got on the bloody train. I was on the bus on the way to Temple Mead Station. And massive patches of my vision started going, which for me means the onset of a bloody migraine, which is an absolute nightmare. So I got onto the train. I decided to push ahead. Part of me wanted to go home, but I was like, no, I've got stuff to do, you know. So I, I pushed on to the train. I right? got on there and this bloke come and sat next to me straight away in Bristol. All I wanted to do was to close my eyes and be quiet and try and get through this. Uh, and it started jabbering away at me. It wouldn't take any kind of hint. I'm sitting there with my eyes closed. Honestly, that's obvious I don't want to talk. But this boring bastard started jabbering away to me about the thorough valet job that he'd done in his car that weekend. Valet job? What on earth are you wittering on about? What on earth are you talking about, you pretentious prick? You've just washed the bloody car. Thorough valet job. How can you think some stranger is going to be interested in your stories of thoroughly washing your car? God, every word he was saying was pounding through my head. It was ridiculous. Anyway, luckily he got off at Bath. And I'm thinking, like, finally, I've got some peace and quiet. No, it was bad to worse. Out of the bloody fire and into the oil or whatever the bloody say. All right. Next, I've got this lady coming and sitting next to me. And I was right at the front of the train where there's this gap between me and the bloody wall. And she pushed his buggy on and she came and sat next to me. And it was, it was hell sent. It was Awful. All I needed was silence, so as quiet as possible, and no light. All right? And she parks this buggy and just leaves this like three or four year old toddler in it, and he's going mental all the way down to bloody Southampton. This was going on. He was screaming, screeching. It was awful. It was literally my my head felt like someone had taken out my right eye and put in a sat sodding sumer in there the pressure was so much and every time he screamed it felt like it was gonna crack bloody open and she did nothing she did absolutely nothing this little screaming snot nosed little thing was just going constantly the whole time and she was pretending to ignore it she was she said to him at one point no i'm not gonna listen to you not gonna listen to you not gonna listen to him You've got to do something about this. He's screaming. Everyone's having to listen to this. I get you don't want to give in to the kid or anything, but just engage him. It's a two-hour two -hour bloody train journey. Get him out of the buggy. Of course he's not going to want to be strapped in the whole bloody time. Talk to him. He's your bloody kid. Entertain him. And shove him. Shove him. 
chunks of Mars bar in his mouth every 10 minutes does not constitute entertainment. It's ridiculous. Yes, Mars bars are lovely. They're sweet. They're nutritious and stuff. But the kid does not need that much sugar when he's unable to bloody move. Honestly, it was ridiculous. All of us, everyone on that train was having to endure this. I was having to endure this. Why as a group are we enduring this? We weren't involved in a bloody decision making. You didn't consult me when you let your bloody boyfriend chuck his muck up you before he probably went to prison for petty burglary. Ah, if you've had a kid, you've got to take responsibility and look after it. And if you're not, if you're just going to leave it there, if you're going to leave it there screaming and ignore it, you should get a soundproof little cage or something. Honestly, it's ridiculous. The world is ridiculous. You need a license. The RSPCA come and inspect you. To have a bloody dog or something, rescue one. Any Tom Dick or Harry can have a kid. Ah, drove me mad. It was the worst journey in the world. The best part of that journey, the best part of that journey, when I have a migraine, I vomit sometimes. And my best part of that journey was going into the toilet, ramming, ramming my foot up against the door so the door couldn't open because the lock didn't work. Ramming my other foot to try and secure me and then managing to vomit in time with the train. That was the best bit, because there was a little bit of peace and quiet in there. Awful. I wanted to make a video about it last night, but after a migraine, I feel like I've had a stroke. Half my face goes all numb and revolting.